Hello everyone and welcome once again to Captain Goodspeed Maths, I'm Joe, if you're new around here and today we are going to be talking about kinematics with calculus. Uh, so the learning objective is to understand how to tackle problems involving variable acceleration. So in the last lesson, uh, if you didn't catch it, we did talk about a constant acceleration uh, and the SUVAT equations. Now we're talking about a more realistic scenario where acceleration may be variable so let's get into it so we've studied how to work things out when they are traveling with a constant acceleration i.e what we did with suva however when the motion involves variable acceleration we must use our good old friend calculus which we studied a little while ago so we can track the position of a particle as it moves along a straight line uh, where it is at any time, i.e. the displacement, will be called s of t, uh, its velocity at any time will be called v of t, and its acceleration at any time will be called a of t, because if you think about it, these things are all going to vary uh, as time goes on. So these need to be functions of t. So there's two key relationships that you need to be aware of. So s of t differentiates to v of t which differentiates to a of t so ds dt is v of t and dv dt is a of t uh, and well we'll talk about the, the other way back in a minute so a particle moves in a straight line such that at time t its displacement s from a fixed position o on the line is given by s equals 2t cubed minus 3t squared plus 5t. So first find expressions for the velocity and acceleration in terms of t. Uh, so we know that v of t is ds dt, so we're going to have to differentiate this function s up here uh, with respect to t. So, you know, I, I probably mentioned this in the differentiation uh, lesson. If it was dy dx, uh, it's not just y and x that you can do differentiation with. S and t you can. So do ds by dt. So remember, from differentiation, bring the power to the front, knock 1 off the power. So we get v uh, equals 6t squared minus 6t, because the 5 just goes away. So that is v of t. Uh, a of t is dv dt, so we differentiate that uh, v equation that we had before, and we get a of t equals uh, 12t minus 6. Power to the front, knock 1 off the power. So part 2, uh, hold on, it's the same, yeah, it is the same question, just checking. Uh, part 2, the, the times when... Uh, when it is at rest so uh, we've got our formulas for v and a there so the times when it is at rest so what does rest mean that means it's not moving that means its velocity is zero so we check out at uh, the times when the velocity is zero so we set our um, v equal to zero there and we get zero equals 6t squared minus 6t uh, which is uh, 6t t minus 1 so the times are zero and one don't fall into the trap of cancelling a t off and losing a solution there. Moving on, uh, so part three, how far is it from O when it is at rest? So uh, we know the times um, are zero and one when it is stopped. So we sub those times into our distance equation or displacement equation up here and we can work out what s is. So we know the particle is at rest initially t equals 0 and when t equals 1. So displacement is given by s equals 2t cubed minus 3t squared, that should be, plus 5, apologies about that little typo there, so that should be squared, there you go, <laughs> oh, wonderful uh, editing there Joe. <laughs> Uh, so we put a 0 in uh, and get s equals 5. We stick a 1 in and we get s equals 4. So those are the uh, two answers there. So part 4 now, the initial acceleration of the particle. So what does initial mean? That one means when the time is on 0. So we set our acceleration uh, formula, e uh, or t equal to 0 in the acceleration formula. Um, and we get, uh, so it'll be 12 times 0. Uh, which is 0 minus 6, so a equals minus 6 meters per second squared. So that's the initial acceleration. So there you go.
easy peasy really uh, if you if you want to think of it uh, like that uh, so let's do another one then a particle moves along the uh, x-axis and its position is given by s of t equals s t squared uh, sorry 2 t squared minus t when is the particle at the origin? So what does the origin mean? It means where it starts. So that means when t equals 0. So we set t equal to 0. Uh, oh, sorry. When s equals 0. Idiot. <laughs> uh, the origin is when it hasn't moved. It's not necessarily at t equals 0. It's asking us when it is. So that is your clue. You're trying to find what t is. So the origin means s equals 0. Uh, so we set that in. The origin is where it starts, so uh, when it hasn't moved at all. So 0 equals 2t squared minus t. So therefore we uh, factorise that out. Do not lose a solution here. Be very, very careful. t times uh, 2t minus 1 equals 0, so t equals 0 or a half. So where is the particle after uh, a quarter seconds uh, or a quarter of a second? How far from O is it? So... Uh, where is the particle after um, a quarter of a second? Well, you just stick a quarter into the S uh, formula. So you get that, which is uh, minus an eighth. Um, and how far from O is it? So the displacement is minus an eighth. So how far is that? We think of it as just the numerical part of the answer. So it's an eighth of a meter from O to the left because it's displacement. Remember, it's moving along the x-axis, so left or right. Find expressions for the velocity and acceleration of the particle. So this is much more like the previous question. So uh, remember, v of t is ds dt. So we differentiate uh, s of t with respect to t, and we get 4t minus 1 power to the front, not 1 off the power. And we do the same for a of t, and we just get 4. So it's constant acceleration, this question, actually interesting. Let's do another one then. A particle has a position uh, given by s of t equals 3t cubed minus 3t squared plus t minus 4. Find when the particle is at rest. So this is a little bit m more tricky. So we need to find when v equals 0. Therefore we need a formula for v. So we're going to have to differentiate this first and we get 9t squared minus 6t plus 1. Then we set that equal to 0 because we want it to be at rest. Uh, and then we factorise, and we get t equals a third. There you go. Easy peasy. Uh, part two, find when the particle is moving at its minimum speed. What does minimum speed mean? Well, it means when a equals zero. It means that you are not accelerating or decelerating. It is, it's either going to be at its max speed or its min speed. So we need to find dv dt. So we get 18t minus 6, uh, so that's our a of t. We set that equal to 0, so we get t equals a third. So v min is uh, 9 times a, a ninth, uh, because a third squared. So we stick our third back into the v equation uh, above, and we get uh, v equals 0, which confirms what we saw before, because we found t equals a third um, for when it was at rest if you remember. Part 3 then, find when the particle is at the point where s equals 4, minus 4. So we stick minus 4 into the uh, at the start of the s of t equation um, up here. So they're telling us what that is. Uh, so that's minus 4. And then we set it equal to this, rearrange it a little bit and we get uh, this cubic take a t out and you get a quadratic uh, so I don't think that factorizes so you will have to use the quadratic equation so you get t equals 0 or 3 plus or minus the root uh, 9 minus 12 over 6 so another thing to, to mention about this then the, the kinematics with calculus uh, something which I haven't mentioned in the video but is probably quite obvious uh, to you lot so we have this relationship here. So v of t uh, differentiates to a of t. Well, what is also the case is that a of t integrates to v of t. So that is the integral uh, of, of a of t, I guess. Um, and then if we integrate v of t, we get s of t. So that's going to be the integral of v of t. 
And remember, your constants of integration, you will need extra information in the question to be able to work out what the full functions are. But that is quite an obvious uh, application of these relationships that the integral also works. But if you found that lesson helpful, then make sure you leave a like down below. Uh, and if not, then let me know what I can do to explain it a little bit better. Subscribe to the channel for more FSMQ videos. Remember, all these lessons are uploaded to the Google Drive, so you can go through it at your own pace. And also, um, uh, there's a playlist on the channel with all the FSMQ videos, so you can see the whole course. Best of luck with your exam. Thank you very much for watching.